Turning to John chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. This verse reflects that the Word is God. He created all things, and He was with God in the beginning. And remember that God is a spirit. This is God the Word speaking in Genesis when Elohim said, Let there be light. Move to Revelation chapter 4, verse 10. The four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. The question arises now, who is the one God, the Creator, seated on the throne that John can see? Can we assume that is God the Father, or the Son, or the Holy Spirit? The answer can be found in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 5. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness and is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment. And as a vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. While well, we see in this text that the Almighty God called His Son an eternal God and gave Him the credit for the creation, He also established that there was a day of being begotten, or in layman's terms, conceived by the Holy Spirit. God the Word is a spirit and was placed into the egg of the Virgin Mary around the time of 4 B.C. This was the day he was begotten by God the Father. This introduces another picture of the invisible God. The Word was made flesh. He was not created, did not ever begin being, or ever cease being God the Word, but was now being manifested as Emmanuel, which means God with us. He is truly God in the spirit and truly man in the flesh. While we, of course, are conceived as human in the spirit and human in the flesh. This brings us back to John chapter 1 verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And we move to John 1:18. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, hath declared Him. This manifestation of the Word made flesh, Emmanuel, has a different function beyond the creation of all things. It is written in Hebrews 10:11. Therefore, when He came into the world, He said, 
sacrifice and offerings you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. Herein lies the stumbling block for many religions that teach the doctrine of one God without recognizing the Word made flesh. An extremely important truth in the Christian faith is believing that the Lord Jesus Christ is God the Word. And distorting this fact is the foundational teachings of many of the modern cults today. For example, the Jehovah Witnesses teach that the Lord Jesus Christ is Michael the Archangel, reincarnated to be the only begotten Son of God. So by being a created being, an archangel, they have demoted him from being the true image of the Father. And the Jehovah Witnesses cannot be called Christians because they have created their own Jesus just the way they want him. Beware when they talk to you about Jesus and God, they have a different definition in mind. It's a bait and switch tactic. Many of the members of these non-Christian cults are wonderful, loving, and generous people whom are doing their very best to please God as they know Him. However, they have learned the doctrine of their churches and do not have a personal relationship with the real, living, breathing, resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. They have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit and do not manifest the gifts of the Spirit. Their church is poisoned with the doctrines of false Christ, false prophets, and false teachers. An example is how rat poison is made of 99% good wheat. But the 1% anticoagulant is what kills the rat. Salvation does not come through service to the church, but by having a personal relationship with the real Lord Jesus Christ. This is one of the many reasons why Jesus said in Mark chapter 13, verse 5, And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And again in Luke 21, verse 8, And he said, Take heed, that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draweth near, go ye not after them. The word made flesh is the stumbling block for the Jews, many of whom refuse to even consider that God would have a son, even though it was foretold by many of the Old Testament prophets. We can read the scriptures and see that who we say the Lord Jesus Christ is, is the dividing line between heaven and hell. Who we believe the Lord Jesus Christ is, is what Jesus said was the rock that the Lord will build his church on. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. When Jesus was nailed to the cross and died, he gave up the spirit. What was the nature of that spirit that came out of that broken, bloody human body hanging on the cross? Was it a human spirit? That of an archangel? Or was it the sovereign God, God the Word, creator of all of creation? God Himself is expecting your answer to this question. God is examining your faith to see if you are a true believer in His only begotten Son. God is examining your obedience and your fruit to see if your lifestyle denies or supports that Jesus is your Lord. What we really believe will change us, and our walk in life will prove what we believe. The way we answer this question determines our eternal home with Jesus or in the lake of fire. 